When do you, is there a cue for start? Just give Megan a sign of some sort. I'm Shannon Noel, and this is Alec Fernandetto and Diego Gonzalez, and we're going to be presenting the Google R smartphone to you today. The Google R smartphone was designed because Google is the internet, but the internet is running out of people, which means our profits are going down. Now, when we began this project, we began this project wanting to revolutionize the smartphone experience and then crack into a new market to bring our revenues back up. And so today, we're going to go over the product, the future of the product, and what we're bringing to Google, and why we need this in our market. Now, revenues are highly correlated with the amount of people in the market. And last year, our Google, um, the last, the last um, quarter, our CEO Larry Page said that our revenues were only 19%. Now, that's good, but it's not great. And we're not growing. Um, our, right now, our market is mostly dominated by sales in the US and the UK. And we make, according to data by Masco, about $86 per person per year. But what that means, we reach, reached a market saturation point. Everyone who has a phone or computer has the internet. They're using Google. We simply can't sell them anything else. So what do we do? We can't wait for them to have kids and to sell them the internet and to keep making money. We need what we call the rest of the world. We need to bring the internet to a new consumer base. And I'm not talking about small countries. I'm talking about really big growth opportunities here. Japan, uh, China, Germany. Now, how do we reach them? I want to introduce you to someone in this slide that I think will help explain this idea a little further. This is Trivali. He is a farmer who lives in southern Kenya. Now, how do we bring Google to him? We have to get the internet to him. We have to do it cheaply and easily, where he can use it every day with local comestibility. Com and now I want you to keep the Trigali in mind when we go over the goals for the next project. When we have a smartphone and it breaks, what do we do? We buy a new one. When we run out of battery, what do we do? We charge in. But Trigali can't do that. The nearest place for him to charge is in town 20 miles away. And so that's what we want to be able to fix. This design anorexia where we have thin phones that we can't fix and our batteries don't even last a day. iFixit's Kyle Wentz has an excellent point when he discusses this. We need to be able to fix this problem. If Trigali breaks his screen, he just needs to buy a new screen, not a new phone, he can't afford it. When he runs out of a battery, he needs to be able to hot swap a battery pack in there and fix his problems. And so we kind of came up with this buzz phrase. Think global, work global. So if we want to create a global phone, how do we do that? Our globe is incredibly diverse. We need to make everyone be able to use their phone. So we have to allow for local custom ability. We have to give the power to the consumers to design the phone for their specific needs. And we want to view this in the developing world. That's where the customers are. That's where the innovation is. That's where the internet hasn't gone yet. That's where we're going to make our money. And so we can use these goals to come up with the R smartphone project. I'm going to hand it off to Alex. I'm going to go over the project himself. All right. Uh, like, I, like she said, I'm going to be going over the Aerophone, the specifications of it. And, all right. <laughs> uh, so, like, it's a very highly customizable phone. And what she, what she means by that is you have, uh, you know, if you want to get a different type of speaker, it's not, you know, with the iPhone 6. What, what, what's in it is what you get. You don't really, not much from a customizational standpoint. So what they're doing is they're actually making different types of speakers for, for example, people who like uh, hip hop or rap music. It's, they're different. Uh, maybe someone who wants to be able to hear, they can't hear the voices as well when they're on the, Call, they can actually enhance where you know the voice is amplified uh, rather you know rather than just how it is normally. Some of the features it's set to release in 2015 in January. Uh, like I said, very uh, customizable speakers. Platform will include a highly modular or a structural frame uh, such as keyboard and extra battery. Uh, like, like Shannon said, there are a lot of things you can swap in and out. There are going to be three sizes to the Aero smartphone. 
And that's mini, medium, and large. Mini would probably be more along the size of maybe an iPhone 4. Uh, I don't think the iPhone 6 is a little bit, it's a lot bigger now. And the large would probably be more along the Android, how, you know, the big screen, very, uh, very large phone, but some people tend to like that. So those are your dimensions. May look a little complicated, but like I tried to give you kind of a visual image of what the different sizes. As you can tell, the medium is going to be somewhere in between. Uh, here is a. Or, sorry. These are. This is basically the one of the Air smartphones, the prototypes, basically stripped down, and those are all the very customizable. A lot of things you can swap in and out, as you can tell. There are other dimensions, and it's going to sell around $50 upon first release next year. And now I'm going to pass it over to Diego, who's going to discuss the future of our product. Thank you, Alex. Now I'll explain to you um, how might this be the beginning of a new era for smartphones. To begin with, when you buy this product, the only product, the only feature will have is Wi-Fi included. So what they're trying to do, as Shannon said, like they're trying to give people access to internet since our sales depend on who has access to internet. Furthermore, customers decide what you want on your product. Like if you want to take photos or if you want to take selfies, I don't know. You can improve your camera and, and like you can build your own phone like you want. It. And as Apple, as you know, Apple makes a phone each year and it's really like you get used to the phone, like they do it for you. And as contract as our our phone is just the the complete different like you can you 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 use your phone you you can upgrade parts by parts each year instead of buying a whole phone each year. People might think like people who are interested in this phone just want to get who are really onto technology, but that's not true. We're aiming for people to buy a phone for a simple, cheap price when they can use it really well. Furthermore, according to Paul, one of the leader efforts of, the, of this smartphone, he said he has gone with the military working, and they've been working for the military because they're really interested in not having radios, the big object, and having this phone, so it's really simple. And for example, in Iraq, they say that sometimes it's hard looking at the screen, and with this phone, you can update your screen and so you can see it really clear. And they try to make it really swappable, like really not complicated to do, like really easy parts, just adding and taking them out. And in conclusion, what we talked today was about um, Google trying to rise sales by the internet, by giving access to internet at a cheap price. And we're looking at for a phone, a smartphone for fifty dollars, which you can upgrade parts by parts. And it's it might be the beginning of a new era for smartphones in the in the future. Thank you. Any questions? No problem.